Good morning guys, today I'm out here doing an outdoor pottery firing and I'm going to do some experimentation and see what's the best way to measure the temperature in an outdoor pottery firing. Today I brought with me one of these fancy new infrared guns and a good old fashioned thermocouple and pyrometer. So I'm going to use these two on this firing here and we're going to see which one does the best job of accurately measuring the temperature in the fire, specifically the temperature of the pottery in the fire. So let's get started. I've been using a thermocouple on my firings for years now, and it's really convenient. It does a great job of measuring the temperature when it works. Sometimes where the wires connect to the thermocouple or the pyrometer, they get messed up and I need a little screwdriver and I gotta kinda pull them out, readjust them, tighten those screws in there. So um, occasionally it doesn't work. Nice thing is it doesn't need batteries. So uh, you can come out here in the field and I got a million things to remember when I'm coming out to fire. I gotta remember a shovel. I gotta remember the pottery. I gotta remember a lighter. I gotta remember to bring cover shirts. I mean, there's just literally, there's a, a hundred things I gotta remember to bring. And batteries are one thing I don't have to worry about with a pyrometer because it doesn't use batteries. So that's nice. Uh, but one of the negatives on that is you have to set it up ahead of time. You have to, when, before I stack the pottery in the firing, uh, when it's coals, I have to set that pyrometer up and I have to bury the wire for two reasons. One, I don't want the wire to melt uh, when the fire gets hot. But also I don't want to be tripping on that wire as I'm walking around the fire taking care of things. Uh, so this pyrometer I ordered off the internet. I don't remember exactly where, but I'll look up something similar and I'll put the link to it uh, where you can purchase it on Amazon down the doobly-doo in case you're interested in picking up one of these uh, pyrometers. They're not super expensive. Uh, mine came with a thermocouple, a short, like an eight inch thermocouple. Uh, the one I'm using here is real nice because I can bury the end down beneath the fire and I've got about a 12 inch thermocouple sticking out there that I can adjust so that it's right over the coals and under the pottery. Uh, so it's nice and long and that way I can kind of avoid the heat uh, for the wire easier. Uh, the, the eight inch, I've used the eight inch as well. It works fine. You just have to be a little more careful how you position it, you know, because you've only got eight inches to work with getting it below the heat there. So the pyrometer, the 12 inch one, um, I assume you can buy those online. This one was given to me by my friend Clint Swink. Uh, if you don't know who Swink is, uh, he's a well-known pottery replicator, and I'll put a link to a video I made about Swink uh, right up here, so you can check that out if you want to learn more about Clint Swink. I don't know if you can see the pyrometer here. I've got all my pottery stacked over the coals here. I've got my cover sherds in, everything's ready to go, except I have to pile wood over it. Uh, you can see the pyrometer here is showing about 250 degrees Celsius right now. So I'm gonna hit it with this and see if I get a different reading. Okay, so I hit it with the gun. Uh, some of those rocks that are sitting right in the coals are like about 280 degrees Celsius. Uh, the pots vary quite a bit. The bottoms of the pots are about 200, and some of the outside areas uh, towards the top are more like 80 degrees Celsius. So a lot of variability depending on where it's at. You know, those down by the coals are hotter, obviously. Uh, but of course, remember when we're firing, um, we want to fire all of our pottery. So it really doesn't make much difference if it gets hot enough at the bottom. Uh, if the top is the coolest part, which we don't know, but we'll hopefully find out soon, we want to make sure the top of the pottery gets to that desired temperature. So this may be very helpful for that since it's hard to get that thermocouple, you know, up in a position near the top of the pottery in the firing. So we'll see. So this is interesting, uh, the top, the pots on the top that I can shoot with the gun are showing about 490, almost 500 degrees Celsius. 
and those that I can shoot in at the bottom are clear down at like two, three hundred degrees Celsius. So we've got a huge difference uh, because of the convection column, that is the hot air that's rising, we're actually a lot hotter at the top than at the bottom, and the pyrometer would never tell us that. The pyrometer's reading almost 400 degrees Celsius now, so a little bit of difference there, maybe at least 100 degrees Celsius between the top and bottom of the pile of pottery right now. Okay, so the pyrometer's showing about 550 degrees about 550 degrees Celsius on the pyrometer right now, and I'm going to hit it with the infrared gun. I got 704 at the top of that pot. Just about 700. Let me shoot the bottom. Not the same. About 700 at the bottom too. So right now, the infrared gun tells me the pottery is about 700 degrees almost any place I hit it. The pyrometer, which remember is at the bottom of that stack, it's under the pottery, is about 550. So we've got a discrepancy showing already in our temperatures. And I think that's primarily, this is my theory before I started, con because of convection. So that hot air is traveling up in the stack and it's actually heating the, the higher parts of the stack of pottery faster and hotter than the bottom where that thermocouple is located. Okay, so it was burning down to coals. A lot of the wood had completely kind of crumbled into little bits. Uh, maybe I didn't use quite enough large material on it and it was cooling off a lot according to this the, uh, the thermocouple showed the temperature was still rising, but remember the thermocouple's at the bottom, it's sitting right above those coals. Using the infrared gun, I was able to hit the temperature at the top and the outsides of the pots, especially the parts that were becoming exposed as the coals fell away. And what that showed me was those areas were cooling down significantly. So while underneath we were looking at over 700 degrees Celsius, at the outsides and at the top, we were, we were right around six, so 100 degrees cooler and so I realized what I needed was a, a little boost, a little pick me up, maybe a little more coals over the top to kind of get that up to around 800 degrees and maybe burn those a little cleaner and harder. So I got an armload of more wood and I piled that over that and now hitting it with the infrared gun all over, uh, we're showing right around 800 degrees most places on the pottery. Uh, and this thermocouple is now showing um, about, about 750 which uh, I suppose, but underneath there, I would think it'd be nice and toasty. So I don't know if it's a little slower to react. Uh, you know, it measures it differently where this is measuring the surface temperature on the outside of the pot. That is measuring the air temperature, uh, you know, below the pottery. So it's a little different. Um, so if I was just reading this, if I was just reading the pyrometer, I might think I still needed more push to get it to where I wanted it. Uh, but the infrared gun shows me that I've reached 800 degrees all over, so I, I think I'm going to be plenty hot to fire these pots real good. I'm just going to let this burn to coals now. Eight oh four, right on the face of the face pot. Now, can I get the neck of my canteen? I can, and I do have the carbon burned off. It's clean right now. Seven fifty. That's much better. That's much better temperatures. And the thermocouple still says about 750. Okay, let me show you something. And this is regarding the superiority of the infrared gun, right? So the thermocouple right now is reading uh, just a hair over 700, maybe 720, okay? And that's, remember, that's under the pottery. So let's hit it with the infrared gun and see what we got. Because you can see this hole here is the whole outside of my canteen right there is exposed. So I can hit it with the infrared all over. So let's see what we got. Uh, and you got to make those two dots come together. And I've got 503 right below the neck, okay? So let's hit the middle, the body, right? in the center, 
579. So we've come up a little bit, just coming down a couple inches. Now let's hit the bottom. At the underneath. Can you see that? 781 degrees. We're almost 800 degrees at the bottom of the pot and like 500 at the top. So we've got a variance of 200 degrees there. And that's 200 degrees that the thermocouple is not reading for us. So the thermocouple is telling us that it's over 700 degrees. And you would think, you know, the pot was over 700 degrees, but that's not true. Remember early on, the top was showing hotter than the bottom. Uh, but now that we're burning the coals, and I always thought, this is the hottest part of the firing, but it truly isn't. Only the bottom of the pottery is getting the hottest part now. Really the hottest part is when it's flaming up. I was wrong about that because I was using a thermocouple to measure my temperature. Now we can see that as soon as those flames die down and that the coals start dropping away, that pottery starts cooling off rapidly, which is why we have a reading of over 700 on the thermocouple right now. And yet we know that the neck of that jar is about 500 degrees, which isn't hot enough to burn out carbon. It's not hot enough to really even fire ceramics. Um, so at this point, the top is not, it's just warm. It's not doing anything good for it at this point. It might be burning out some carbon, but I think you've got to get over like 650 to start burning carbon off. So we're pretty much stagnant at the top. And uh, only the infrared gun is able to tell us that because I'm able to hit the temperature in various places. Okay, I'm pretty much done. I pulled all the coals away and it's cooling off really good. Uh, you can see the colors are starting to pop because it's at this point uh, that the pottery will start actually oxidizing the irons and such will start oxidizing more at this point so that when you pull them out, a lot of times, uh, you know, your reds are kind of a chocolate brown. And then as they cool, those reds get redder. And so that's kind of what's happening at this point. We have a lot of iron oxidizing and those colors will pop more as it cools. Okay, let's take one last look at the temperatures here as it cools down. The pyrometer's telling me it's under 600 degrees Celsius. It's about 550, somewhere in there. So let's hit it with the gun. Once again, huge discrepancy. I've got, uh, you know, 500 at the bottom on the pyrometer and somewhere in the 200 range at the top of this stack. So once again, we've got that discrepancy between the thermocouple and the infrared gun. The infrared gun is able to help me see those subtleties in the firing, those differences, the differentiation in temperatures in different parts of the firing. It's gonna help me to fire better. All right, let's review my results really quick. Um, the pottery is cool enough to touch now, and it came out real good. Got some ash on it, needs to be washed, washed off. Uh, I've got some neat uh, kind of blushing going on, places where it oxidized more and less, so there's kind of orange and red kind of playing around in here, which looks really cool. Uh, so that was a neat effect that I'm not sure how I accomplished. This is that new material that I collected in the White Mountains last year. So this is the first time I've actually fired this, I think. Anyway, if you want to see where I collected this material, I'll put the link to that video over there. Okay, I think that came out real good. And these were both uh, part of the Ancient Pottery Challenge. So if you don't know what that is, that's the 10 unique forms from the Ancient Southwest that I'm making this season. If you don't know what it is and you want to watch that video, I'll put the link up here as well. This is the Where Goes Polychrome Face Pot. Rings real good. Came out real good. I don't have access to the clay they used for that uh, Caretas and Huergos polychrome, which is really, really orange. But I think this came out pretty good. It's not that far off from what it really is. It's a little, it's a little browner than it should be. Uh, and certainly Casas Grandes types never have fire clouds, but these are some pretty cool fire clouds. I, I like those. I think they're really cool. You've got you know, shades of orange and yellow and kind of gray and black kind of playing around on there. It's really beautiful. So I think that came out nice too. Um, so they fired plenty hard. These are both made with that Pima clay uh, that I collected in the beginning of this season. You can go back and watch that video if you want. Now, about the methods of measuring temperature, okay? Uh, thermocouple, 
uh, it works real good at measuring the temperature in one spot uh, and keeps giving you a consistent reading for that spot, which is nice because this only works when you point it at the spot, you know? So, uh, and you never, sometimes you don't hit the same spot each time. So it, you know, it varies more. This is, this is a constant. Somebody told me these are real good if you want to graph the temperature in your kiln, which is, you know, a good idea. In all the years I've owned this, I've never made a graph of my firing. And now that I realize how much the temperature varies from the bottom where the thermocouple is to the top and on the sides, uh, it makes me realize that those graphs aren't worth very much because what good is a graph of the temperature if it's not an accurate reflection of what the pottery is going through? And it's not. Uh, it's an accurate representation of what the temperature is beneath the pottery in the kiln. So it's close, uh, it's just not very accurate for what it pretends to be. A thermocouple is made for use in a kiln, in an enclosed kiln, and it works really good for that. In an open outdoor firing, um, I think less so, and that is because it's open, you're at the mercy of the elements. A little breeze comes through, poo, your pottery cools off quickly. Uh, you know, the coals start falling away and leaves an opening in your, in your uh, coals where air, hot air can escape. Boom, your pottery cools quickly. This isn't capturing that because it's down underneath, it's a little more protected. So I think it's better for a kiln. It, it definitely has advantages. Um, this is really good for measuring what you really wanna measure and that is the temperature of the pottery. Now granted, it's only measuring the surface of the pottery. Uh, the interior may be different, but conduction is a very efficient means of heat transfer. There's three methods of, con of heat transfer, convection, conduction, radiation. Uh, conduction is the most efficient. So I have to think if the outside is 700 degrees, the inside may actually be hotter yet because uh, conduction is bringing that heat in there and it's not, it's not dissipating as quickly as the exterior where it's gonna you know, lose heat. So, so I, I think this is gonna help me measure those, those subtleties in an outdoor firing, uh, the subtleties in the, in the temperature, uh, the variances in the temperature, get a better grasp on what's going on in an outdoor firing. Cost-wise, I think you can get a thermocouple and a pyrometer for about $120. Uh, and I purchased this on Amazon for $60, so about half the price. Um, now, if you're firing down in a pit, uh, like an Anazazi trench kiln or something, it can be very hard to get an accurate reading in there with this. Whereas this, uh, better. But like I said, this is more suited to a kiln. So if you're in a trench kiln, you're in more of a kiln type environment. It's more enclosed, it's more stable temperature wise this may be the better choice. But on above ground firing, uh, I kind of feel like this is the superior product. Uh, so if you're interested in one of these, uh, I will put the link to the one I purchased just a couple weeks ago on Amazon down in the doobly-doo. You can click on that. Uh, and I'll put a link to one of these if you're interested too. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not throwing this out. I'm not done with it. I'm just starting to realize the limitations of it a little bit more, okay? All right, so if you want to learn more about outdoor firing, check out this video over here, which is going to go more into the process of outdoor firing and not the measuring of temperature. I appreciate you coming along with me today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.